New York Times' Jeff Gerth and Joel Brinkley and historian Alfred McCoy of the University of Wisconsin in their mockery of Second World War Filipino veterans and guerrillas by attacking Ferdinand Marcos as a fraud. Dear Jeff Gerth, on January 23, 1986, the New York Times published an article entitled Marcus's Wartime Role Discredited in U.S. Files. Mr. Girth, you and Joel Brinkley, now deceased, were the authors of the article that reported that the U.S. Army concluded after World War II that claims by Ferdinand E. Marcus that he had led a guerrilla resistance unit, Maharlika, during the Japanese occupation of his country were fraudulent and uh, quote-unquote absurd. Mr. Girth, you cited Alfred W. McCoy, a historian who discovered documents among hundreds of thousands of others while at the National Archives researching a book on World War II in the Philippines. In short, Mr. Girth, you and Mr. Brinkley cited Mr. McCoy, some civilians, and members of the U.S. military who insisted that Marcus did not fight the Japanese during World War II and was therefore unworthy to be called a hero. What the article does not say, Mr. Girth, is the actual historical context by which Marcus and the Maharlika was judged as not being worthy of American military recognition and any corresponding benefits. The following is the historical context of the U.S. military's denial of giving recognition and benefits to Marcus and men like him during the Second World War in the Pacific, from December 1941 until its end in 1945, U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt promised Filipinos who fought the Japanese that they would receive U.S. citizenship and full benefits as part of the American military. By 1946, however, Roosevelt's successor, President Harry Truman, broke the American promise with the Recession Act of 1946 when the U.S. Congress declared services in the Philippine Commonwealth Army or authorized guerrilla units were not to be considered as active military service for the purposes of veterans' benefits. As a result, out of an estimated 200,000 Filipino World War II veterans and fighters and guerrillas, only 4,000 Filipinos or, or, or about 2% were recognized by the U.S. military and given benefits. That left more than 196,000 Filipino World War II fighters without the promised benefits from the Americans. Included in the 196,000 were Marcus and the Maharlika men. That means Marcus and the Maharlika men belong to the 98% of World War II Filipino veterans who asked for benefits but never received them. Mr. Girth, it would be absurd to even consider that only 4,000 Filipinos helped the U.S. military to win the war against the Japanese in the Pacific. What makes this worse, Mr. Girth, out of the 66 countries allied with the United States in World War II, only Filipinos were denied benefits. My argument seems like a non sequitur argument. However, more historical facts show the real context of the U.S. military denying benefits to World War II Filipino fighters, such as Marcus. For instance, let's take the context of the New York Times article in January 23, 1986, when you, Mr. Girth and Mr. Brinkley, cited Alfred McCoy, who wrote about Marcus and his medals. At that time, World War II Filipino veterans, in 1986, had already been waiting for almost 40 years to be recognized and given the promised benefits. Thus, in truth, Mr. Girth, you, Mr. Brinkley, and Alfred McCoy were not revealing Marcus's fraud, but was actually reaffirming how the U.S. government denied an estimated 196,000 World War II Filipino veterans their benefits. Mr. Girth, this is tantamount to you, Mr. Brinkley, and Alfred McCoy giving the World War II Filipino vets the finger, like Truman did in 1946. And the best way to do it was to treat Ferdinand Marcus as an American bitch by saying he was a fraud, and then using bullying tactics by printing articles against Marcus and 196,000 other Filipino fighters. Mr. Girth, if you, Mr. Brinkley, Mr. McCoy, not to mention President Truman and other U.S. military officials can treat a World War II v Filipino veteran like Marcus this way, think of what Americans like you can do to 196 other World War II Filipino veterans who cannot speak out for themselves. Mr. Girth, it was not until four years later after the publication of your article, or a total of 44 years later in 1990, with the Immigration Act under U.S. President George H.W. Bush, the Filipinos were granted American citizenship. The same Immigration Act, ironically, denying Filipino veterans any other benefits except Social Security. 
which was a Supplemental Security Income, or SSI. Mr. Girth, it was not until 2009, the year 2009, 63 years after the fact, under a stimulus bill signed by President Barack Obama, that World War II Filipino-American veterans were given $15,000. Well, Filipinos who fought in World War II and who lived in the Philippines were only given $9,000. That's $238 a year from 1946 to 2009 for the $15,000 and $142 a year for the 9000 Needless to say, it's not a great way to thank World War II veterans. So where does Ferdinand Marcus fit in all of this from 1946 to 1948? Mr. Garth, let me add some more statistics on the educational level of Filipinos in the 1940s to 1950s. In 1940, the Philippines had an adult literacy rate of about 50%. By 1950, literacy rate for Filipino adults rose to about 62%. If we place the literacy rate of Filipinos in 1947 at about 56%, out of the 196,000 World War II Filipino veterans, an estimated 109,760 World War II Filipino veterans and guerrilla fighters were illiterate. To compound this, Filipino U.S. records keeping in a time of war makes everything worse for World War II Filipino veterans. They can't read, they can't write, so how, that, how are they supposed to keep records? How can they tell Americans what they did if they can't speak or write Filipino, much less English? Therefore, Mr. Girth, Ferdinand Marcus, and the Maharlika was just the tip of the proverbial iceberg of World War II Filipino war veterans who were denied military benefits by the U.S. government. This shows that American decision makers, from Truman to U.S. military officials, can ignore highly educated lawyers like Marcus and the other 196,000 Filipino World War II fighters. Thus, the U.S. military officials can also ignore more than 109,000 illiterate and uneducated World War II Filipino fighters who cannot read, speak, or provide evidence as to how they fought the Japanese and helped win the war. Who were the more than 109,000 literate and uneducated World War II Filipino fighters? Mr. Girth, these are the men, women, and children who helped both Filipino and American fighters. They brought them food, spied for them, cared for their wounds, hid them from marauding Japanese soldiers, created a supply lines and intelligence network that could only be made possible by the local Filipino residents' knowledge of the land and terrain. More than 109,000 literate and uneducated World War II Filipino fighters will never be heard, will never be known, will never be treated as heroes because they could not write, read, much less speak or document their exploits in Filipino or English. If the U.S. military can ignore the likes of educated Marcus and his men in 1946, it reveals that the U.S. military can also forget more than 109,000 illiterate and uneducated World War II Filipino fighters who will never be able to have their say. Which brings us to the conclusion of our critique of your New York Times article, Mr. Girth, entitled, Marcus's Wartime Role Discredited in U.S. Files. What you wrote in the article is not the fraud committed by Marcus, the Maharlika, or 196,000 World War II Filipino fighters. What you, Mr. Girth, and Mr. Brinkley wrote in your article and supported by Alfred McCoy, is historical douchebaggery. Historical douchebaggery is something that can be done by Truman, some U.S. military officials, the New York Times, and the Department of History at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, because Filipinos can't do anything about it. Mr. Girth, and the New York Times can tag Marcus and his Maharlikas as fraud, and there's nothing Filipinos can do about it. Mr. Girth, you and the New York Times can ignore 196,000 Filipino veterans from 1946 to 1990. And there's nothing Filipinos can do about it. Mr. Girth, you and the New York Times can continue to be historical douchebags against World War II Filipino veterans. And there's nothing Filipinos can do about it. Historical douchebaggery is something you can do at the New York Times at the Department of History at the University of Wisconsin. And there's nothing we can do about it. Until now. That's why I'm sending this video to you, Mr. Girth. I'm also inviting other Filipinos all over the world to email the New York Times and the Department of History at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. We can't email Mr. Brinkley. As you very well know, he passed away in 2014. But we will email Alfred McCoy at the Department of History at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. We will ask Mr. McCoy to release the other hundreds of thousands of documents from the National Archives that show how U.S. military officials in World War II 
ignored Roosevelt's promises, denying 196,000 World War II Filipino veterans their benefits. Don't just show Marcus's records. Show all the records of the 196,000 Filipino veterans who were denied benefits. We will ask Mr. McCoy not to be selective and biased. Again, Mr. Girth, you, Mr. Brinkley, and Alfred McCoy were not revealing the fake medals of Ferdinand Marcus. You were just reaffirming another episode in American historical douchebaggery against helpless minorities. Marcus used his education to speak out in 1946. The U.S. military and government denied him. The illiterate and marginalized World War II Filipino fighters will never be able to say anything, Mr. Girth. Your article with Mr. Brinkley and Alfred McCoy continue to make sure of that. This is not just about Marcus and his medals. We know he fought in the war as a lieutenant. This is also about 196,000 World War II Filipino fighters who were denied benefits for 63 years. And Marcus and the Maharlika is just the tip of the iceberg of American historical douchebaggery. Mr. Girth, with the New York Times article about Marcus, douchebags like Harry Truman, Captain Albert Curtis, you, Joel Brinkley, with backup from historian Alfred McCoy, are basically saying, we did it with the African-American slaves. We did it with the Chinese railroad workers. We did it with Indian scouts, and we continue to do it with World War II Filipino war veterans. Historical douchebaggery is something we can do at the New York Times and at the Department of History at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's what you're saying to us. This is the real message of New York Times' Jeff Girth and Joel Brinkley. You did not prove Marcus was a fraud. Mr. Girth, you, Mr. Brinkley, and Alfred McCoy just reaffirmed American historical douchebaggery. As a side note, do you know what's so ironical about the American denial of benefits for Marcus and his men in 1948? When you published your article in 1983, Marcus was the most instrumental Southeast Asian leader in fighting communism in Asia as an American ally. It was because of Marcus's fight against the communist tide in Southeast Asia that more than 51,000 Vietnamese people would find their way to the United States and realize the American dream. That's Maharlika for you, douchebags. I sincerely hope, Mr. Garth, you enjoy your fa. Thank you, Ferdinand Marcos.